Hey, hey, it's Neville here. A few years ago, one of the best copywriters in the world, Joseph Sugarman, made a book called Advertising Secrets of the Written Word. It was renamed to the Adweek Copywriting Handbook. But in section two of this book, he outlines 24 different psychological triggers that get people to buy things. This section of the book was just pure gold and stunned me when I read it. And it's something I constantly refer to. And as a tribute to the awesome Joseph Sugarman, whom I've been lucky enough to hang out with a couple times, here is the full list of Joseph Sugarman's psychological triggers and some examples. So I think the way that you can use this video is kind of listen to it in the background while you're writing some copy or thinking up some marketing ideas, and it might just hit you with an idea. So here are the list of psychological triggers. There's 24 of them. And let's get started. Number one, feeling of involvement or ownership. When people get the feeling of involvement or ownership, they are far more likely to buy. Sugarman describes a successful TV salesman he knew who once told him, when I see someone walk through the television aisle and play with the buttons and knobs and remotes, I know they are far more invested in buying a TV than someone just strolling through the aisle and not touching anything. When you walk by a mall kiosk where they try to sell you a product such as a hair straightener or lotion, when they get you to hold the product, use the product, they will often try to get you to talk about the product with you at length. In this situation, you are spending time, AKA involvement, and using the product, AKA ownership, which will hopefully get you to buy. Number two, honesty. Sugarman says honesty is the most important trigger. When Sugarman ran his mail order catalog, the reason people trusted his opinions is because he would be the first to point out the negative aspects of a product. He was once selling a very ugly thermostat, but it was extremely functional. In fact, he started off the tagline of the ad saying, it had no digital readout, an ugly case, and a stupid name. It almost made us sick. <laughs> now, the fact that he was so honest about the downsides of the product made people believe him about the many upsides of the product. Number three, integrity. Integrity as a psychological trigger is a whole view of your product or service. So are you frequently over exaggerating? Are you saying things that are really hard to believe? You see, if you keep exaggerating in your marketing, it will be harder for people to believe you, especially when deciding if they should fork over money to you. So if you're always lying, using scare tactics, high pressure tactics, exaggerated claims, fake scarcity, this is how people might view you, making them reluctant to trust you. So make sure to show integrity throughout all your marketing. It will help you massively in the long run. Number four, credibility. Joseph Sugarman says honesty plus integrity equals credibility. Once you've established credibility, it makes it much easier for you to sell products because people inherently trust you. So Sugarman gives an example of how when he goes on QVC, the home shopping channel, it's easy to sell products because QVC has a very high level of credibility with their audience. So if he goes on there explaining how great a product is, the viewers inherently believe him when he's on an infomercial. Number five. Value and proof of value. Sugarman says a great way of showing proof of value is by comparing your products to other competing products. The consumer is smart enough to know there are other products out there, and it's your job to bring that up and show them your product is indeed the best value. So here's a picture of a bunch of different mops. And well, we show that there are competing mops, but that our mop is the best. And by comparing other products against yours, you demonstrate proof of value. You can also demonstrate value by comparing it to another commonly bought product. I personally really like this method. So you can say that there's a pizza for $12 versus this healthy recipes book that you also spend $12 on. Like this book of pizza recipes costs only $12, but so does the pizza. So what you're trying to secretly tell the consumer with this comparison is, you probably don't think twice about buying a $12 pizza that lasts for one hour. So why think twice about paying $12 for this book that can potentially have a huge impact on your life? Number six, justify the purchase. Sometimes people want to buy very expensive things, 
but they have to run this process of price justification through their head. This means in their head, they want a product for an emotional reason, but you must provide them with reasons they can logically justify spending the money. So if they're going to say, I'm going to buy an expensive Mercedes Benz, secretly what's being said is I want to look baller to the ladies. So I'm going to buy a Mercedes, but the actual price justification logical part is I'm buying this Mercedes instead of a practical Toyota Camry because it has rack and pinion steering, a great suspension and a high safety rating. Well, Sugarman explains that sometimes you have to give people practical reasons to buy an expensive thing so they can justify it in their head in a different way than just like, Hey, I want to look baller in this Mercedes. Number seven, greed. Sometimes people will buy things just because they are deeply discounted. They almost feel like they are stealing it. This is why flash sales work so well. This is why black Friday works so well. This is why cyber Monday works so well. This is why the holiday season sales work so well. This is why going out of business sales work so well. A lot of people are buying things they probably wouldn't otherwise buy just because there is a short window of time. They can get this deal. Yes. As a business owner for many years across different industries, I can 100% attest to how well this works. And it nearly always surprises me that a reduced price and a countdown timer can get so many people to buy. I resisted this for so long, but it does work. Number eight, establish authority. Sugarman says there are many ways to establish authority. Some of them being quite simple. For example, he says, if you name your company, Jack and Ed's video company, it won't sound very big, but if you call your company computer discount warehouse, it automatically sounds big. Another way of establishing authority is showing off large clients you work with. I remember my first real e-commerce company. I put this blurb up under every single product page and it showcased that we actually sold to some very large companies like MTV, ABC, Wells Fargo, and many more. By simply showing these popular brand logos, larger companies felt far more comfortable ordering from us. Number nine, satisfaction conviction. Having a 30 day refund policy is one small example of a satisfaction conviction, but Joseph Sugarman stresses that it's much, much more. He says that it's your job to tell the customer, Hey, I'm so convinced you will like this product that I'm going to do something for your benefit to prove how incredible my offer is. This offer ideally should be so good that customers think you must be getting ripped off like this Zappos return policy that allows for a whopping 365 day return period. It just looks like people must be ripping them off. Sugarman says that if you can have someone on the slippery slope down to a sale, the right satisfaction conviction can push them over the edge. Here's some quick examples of satisfaction convictions. If you don't buy anything during your two year subscription, I'll refund the unused portion of your subscription. If you aren't happy with their purchase, just call me up and I'll personally arrange to have it picked up at my expense and refund you every penny of your purchase price, including the time it took to return the product. If you're unhappy with blue blockers, I'll let you return them anytime you want. There is no trial period. These are really good examples of satisfaction convictions. Number 10, nature of the product. Every product has its own unique nature and personality, and it's up to you to figure out what it is. So if you are selling a toy, it's a fun game. So you must convey enjoyment and excitement in the marketing. If you are selling a blood pressure machine, well, this is a serious product. So you must convey its reliability and accuracy with the more professional and serious look. Sugarman says that you only need a little common sense to figure out the nature of a product. Number 11, current fads. Sugarman says that keeping an eye on current fads can help you determine what category of product is popular. It also helps you track of what trends will rise and fall and therefore can be good businesses or bad businesses. He also says fads tend to come quickly and go quickly. So it's wise to exploit a fad when you see it starting, but then still get out quickly while on top. Now, of course, hindsight is 2020, just like knowing when to exit a hot stock is hard to do in the moment, but you can see the rise and fall of some trends very clearly. Like here was fidget spinners. It just peaked 
in 2017, it went really hard, got really popular, but then just died out flat. Sugarman would keep a close track on fads and notice that a lot of hot products during a period were all fitness related. He noticed this meant a whole resurgence in the idea of fitness and then successfully sold many products in that category. He knew health in general was becoming a bigger thing because he kept a close track on fads. Number 12, timing. If you're going to jump on a bandwagon of a certain fad, well then knowing when to get on and off is very wise. But in reality, no one knows the exact timing. This is why Sugarman always recommends you first test every product you sell before placing a big bet. He says, the consumer will always tell me if I'm too early or too late or right on target. Sugarman recall a time he produced and tested a portable blood pressure unit. It was doing all right, but not great. But then the American Heart Association started running a major advertising campaign suggesting that Americans take their blood pressure regularly. This luck of timing proved to be very profitable for him. However, sometimes you can do everything right and the timing is just wrong. Sugarman recalled a time in 1980 when he was running his mail order catalog that President Jimmy Carter went on TV and scolded the American people for running up too much debt on their credit cards. This was really bad timing for people like Sugarman who relied on credit card orders. So to have a better pulse on timing than others, it's wise to keep a close eye on current fads and trends. Number 13, desire to belong. Sugarman says the desire to belong is a very powerful motivational factor. Why do people own a Jeep? Why do people own a Mercedes? Why do people own a Harley Davidson? Why do people own Louis Vuitton bags? Many people subconsciously want to belong to the group of people that already owns or uses that specific product. Number 14, desire to collect. Sugarman says the desire to collect is very strong in humans. He once sold model plane tail fins made out of silver and got the brilliant idea to send out a special wooden case that held all eight of the tail fins in the collection. Every time a new tail fin was released, all the people who got the special case would buy one. Something about having this nice case, but an incomplete collection of tail fins really motivated people to buy the rest of the collection. Even with Sugarman's Blue Blocker Sunglasses Company, as the brand got popular, people just wanted to own all the different styles of sunglasses they made. They would release collections of certain glasses and the super users would want to own them all. Number 15, curiosity. Sugarman says curiosity is probably one of the most powerful psychological phenomena there is. Because a person can't touch or experience a product, curiosity is a very strong factor in e-commerce or mail order. You can utilize curiosity in your own marketing by emphasizing the part of the product a customer cannot experience over the internet. For example, Joe Sugarman heavily promoted his blue blocker sunglasses by showing people wearing them and being blown away. But it was almost impossible for a person to experience this without physically trying them on. Number 16, sense of urgency or scarcity. A crazy powerful way for any organization to drum up sales is by offering something that's about to expire soon. This can be a sale, a special promotion, or something that's almost out of stock. By telling the consumer there is a deadline, it forces them to make a quick decision. This is known as scarcity. There's a ton of ways to create ethical scarcity for a product. I'm going to read a bunch of these out in a very fast voice. Holiday promotions, Black Friday sale, Cyber Monday sale, going out of business sale, something is going out of stock soon, countdown timer, one-time discount, coupon code discount, limited time bonus, get something extra with your purchase. Price increasing soon, changes to pricing structure happening soon, holiday or special event sales, new models coming in so need to get rid of old ones quick, registrations closing on a certain date, time sensitive events, early bird tickets, get an extra service for ordering right now such as free shipping, limited space, low inventory of an item, seasonal products or ingredients, one of a kind products that won't be made again, once in a lifetime events, limited edition releases like a special cask version of a whiskey, first come first curve for a product or service. <gasps> 
These are just some of the ways you can introduce scarcity to a product. I can personally attest from selling things online for about 20 years that on days you introduce scarcity or a special promotion, you massively see sales increase. So you can see this chart that as soon as you introduce scarcity, you get this big bump in sales. Number 17, instant gratification. It's not hard to imagine that when someone buys something, they want it quickly. It's been proven over and over that people want their products delivered quickly. The closer you can get a person to instant gratification, the better. This is a big advantage of digital goods such as software, eBooks, videos, Netflix, apps, courses, because once the person pays for it, they can immediately access it. Number 18, exclusivity, rarity, or uniqueness. This concept ties in strongly with trigger number 16, sense of urgency. And it's the reason why certain pieces of art will sell for a hundred million plus dollars or why an old time piece of junk car can sell for 5 million plus dollars. It's because there's only one unique one like it in the entire world. If there's a special significance behind an object and a limited amount, it drives its value up massively. Certain brands, especially luxury brands, take huge advantage of this phenomenon. You are in an exclusive small club if you buy a Ferrari. Ferrari will also release special editions of cars in limited numbers, making them rare and unique. Number 19, simplicity. Simple words, simple layouts, simple explanations. These tend to work best when selling. Complexity and selling generally backfires. Sugarman says, keeping things simple is not about writing up or writing down to any group, but rather just keeping things easy to understand and clear. This is very much like writing in plain language. Number 20, human relationships. Sugarman says, adding in human elements is very easy and can be very powerful. This can mean showing a product being held in a human hand showing a product being used by a human model, showing pictures of the human team who built the product, using language as a normal human uses. Sugarman says you want to use as many positive human elements as you can without risking any negative vibrations from emotional reactions. 21, guilt. Sugarman gives examples of charities that would send free things like stickers or other small gifts in order to kind of guilt people into sending in a donation. A more ethical way to induce guilt in someone is by repeatedly providing them with great information or entertainment. PBS and NPR are both great examples of nonprofit organizations, which use a slight tinge of guilt to get viewers to donating them by providing them tons of great content over the years and only ask for a small donation every once in a while. Number 22, specificity. Sugarman says that being specific in your explanations is very critical and can establish your credibility much better than not being specific. Here's an example Sugarman gives in this chapter. A non-specific example is new dentists everywhere use and recommend cap snap toothpaste. But a specific example would look like 92% of new dentists use and recommend cap snap toothpaste. You see, the example with the 92% figure generates far more believability. He gives another example where he's talking about a product for the feet. A non-specific example would be, there are a lot of nerve endings at the bottom of your feet. A specific example would say, there are 72,000 nerve endings at the bottom of your feet. So by adding specific numbers or details, you naturally add specificity. Number 23, familiarity. Sugarman states that becoming familiar to your customers can be very powerful, especially if they start to like and trust your brand style. When you see Coca-Cola or McDonald's, you are instantly familiar with those brands and trust the product. They have to do very little extra selling to get people to buy Coca-Cola or McDonald's. He also says that using words and phrases the customer are already using in their own life helps to achieve familiarity. Number 24, hope. 
Sugarman says that hope can be a great motivator in the buying process. A person buys a new face cream that offers hope it will make a difference in their wrinkles. An intense golfer buys a new golf ball that offers hope it may take a few strokes off a golf game. Sugarman actually says that hope is oftentimes how scammers can exploit people. They don't give specific results you can achieve, but rather vague statements like, what if you can live to 300 years old? Or what if you can have unlimited energy? Or what if you are destined to be rich? Or it's possible to go from being poor to rich. Then they proceed to sell a product relating to the statement. However, use hope ethically. Sugarman says to build up the credibility of your person, company, or product, whatever you are selling with the proper credibility, you will automatically engage the power of hope to sell. I hope this helped you as it's helped me. These are the list of psychological triggers, and I'll run through them again in a real fast voice. And maybe one of them, just one of them, can give you an idea on the marketing that you're working on right now. So let's go through these list of psychological triggers again. Number one, feeling of involvement or ownership. Number two, honesty. Number three, integrity. Number four, credibility. Number five, value and proof of value. Number six, justify the purchase. Number seven, greed. Number eight, establish authority. Number nine, satisfaction and conviction. Number 10, nature of product. Number 11, current fads. Number 12, timing. Number 13, desire to belong. Number 14, desire to collect. Number 15, curiosity. Number 16, sense of urgency. Number 17, instant gratification. Number 18, exclusivity, rarity, or uniqueness. Number 19, simplicity. Number 20, human relations. Number 21, guilt. Number 22, specificity. Number 23, familiarity. Number 24, hope. I hope that helps you. And I would highly suggest that you go out and buy this book and it's called Advertising Secrets of the Written Word, but it's recently been renamed to the Adweek Copywriting Handbook. It's one of my favorite books on copywriting. It's one of the top three that I've ever read. And I actually probably refer back to this book more often than any other book. In fact, the reason I made this post and video is because I refer to it so often that I have to like go into the book and look it up each time that I decided to make a post about it. So please support Joe Sugarman and buy this book. I think it's a fantastic book, a phenomenal book. And Joe Sugarman was one of the marketers I really, really was attracted to early on in my marketing career because so many of them were scammy and like sold weird pills and like just crazy stuff that I didn't think was good for the world. But Joe Sugarman actually legitimately sold cool products and invented his own products and I thought that was really awesome. And I hope you enjoy this list of psychological triggers. My name is Neville Medora, and I will talk to you later.